Newark's classic rock, Q1043. I, my brain is just, it's going off into bizarre places right now. <laughs> uh, it's as if I was sitting on my couch and, and I was absorbed into the television set and suddenly had a conversation with Elliot Stabler, except it's Chris Maloney. It's, it's actually <laughs> happening. I can't believe you two have never met with Jim being the biggest law and order freak on the planet. How could you have never met? Uh, well, you know. Because I spend all my time sitting on the couch in my underwear with the TV tuned to Ion or USA. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I'm busy making entertainment for Jim to sit on That's that right. couch and <laughs> just for Jim. Yeah, you know, just for Jim. You just know, I you know I get up at three o'clock in the morning. Okay. Uh, and and this is the sound of my alarm. <laughs> that'll, that'll wake you up. <laughs> it does. That'll get you going. It does. Isn't that? In, have you ever met the person who? developed that no mike post i believe it is yeah uh, but i heard he uh, went through a really arduous testing out different sounds and different hammers and different uh, 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 f- kind of uh, things that he's hitting the hammer with and he overlaid them it's, it was rather an arduous process i mean it's just so iconic it is so mm-hmm. iconic i mean it's two seconds and everybody immediately knows what it is not only knows what it is but pictures the whole thing in their head yeah you know well, no that's because you this is all you do that's why you picture it in your no, head no it's not all that i do it's what i do most of the time well what <laughs> It's rather Pavlovian, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Makes Jim uh, start to drool and (laughs) wag his tail. Okay, now, one of of the weirdest things, um, and I I mean, it was weird to me because, you know, I'm such an LNO fan in all of its different uh, versions Mm -hmm. through the years, Uh, but I was telling some friends of mine, women, that (laughs) you were going to be here. Mm Mm-hmm. This morning, I said, Chris Maloney is going to be here. And they didn't bring up Elliot Stabler. They brought up your commercials. Yeah. That you do. Yeah. There are a lot of women that are really, really hooked on those commercials. Well, you know, a lack of clothing can do that to a person. No, it's your body. How did you get that body? You didn't always have that body, well, even, did you? you know, going back 25 years ago. <laughs> when you put it that way. Going it back 25 years ago. There was a lot of physicality in his performance. And if you take a look sometimes when you could see his upper arm, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, the, guy, the guy was, you know, pretty strong. But, but now... Adam, I'm uncomfortable. It, it, I hate him. I'm, just, I'm waiting to go to commercial. I know. This is seriously. I, do you I, spend all your time in the gym when you're not shooting? Pretty close. I'm either dealing with the script, uh, acting, or, or in the gym. Yeah, basically. God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> because you want that body, or it's a stress reliever, or what? No. Well, this is what I thought and and felt that um, because I came back as Elliot Stabler ten years uh, after people had last seen me. I thought, you know, you. I want to give them. You can't change the face, right? The the face has aged, and you've gotten a little grayer, a little less hair, and all that, and that's fine. And I just thought, uh, you know, uh, you got to come back and look like granite to the best of your ability. And so I worked out for almost a year with a trainer, and the, the goal was hypertrophy to get to get a little bit. Wow. Bit, bit bigger a little bit well but, it's yeah i'm working I actually didn't a, get bigger tighter. I, I, t- that's tighter. what it was and you know i did tighter. the intermittent fasting every everything oh, was so, uh, i love you chris sorry i love it's, you because they've been truth. making fun of me yeah. for years now because i'm an <laughs> intermittent faster yeah. oh, says matter. the main grab and there's the main grab there you double go. cheeseburger very good <laughs> i just i'm stress eating now <laughs> One meal uh, a day for her. I have no idea. Oh, no, 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 no. That's freakish. See, no. I, I just, <laughs> I, I don't, I, I actually do what I think most people do, but I, I just have a high metabolism, so I uh, eat, I don't eat for 14 hours. So wow. if I eat at 7 uh, p.m., I don't eat until 9 a.m. So I haven't eaten yet. Wow. Okay, now as an actor, because I'm, I'm imagining that this would be very challenging, and we have another actor in the mm. room, and I'm sure he would agree with me. Uh, you returned into the character of Elliot Stabler after a decade away. But for those who are watching the performance, Elliot Stabler 
Elliot Stabler always existed. It's just that we didn't see him and didn't know what he was doing. So did you have to kind of figure out what the past 10 years for Elliot were like in order to inhabit him again yeah but that and that uh, fell to eileen shaken who was my first showrunner she had she just you know made it up out of whole cloth i think with the help of the dick wolf people you know the the the, uh idea was that he was with an international nypd team which is a real uh part of the nypd you know they they go out to say and they hang out with the uh, cops in paris or london or prague and just so they they check out the cases and the kinds of things that are happening in these pa- uh, places and spaces because they kind of figure well new york is such a central place for people coming into the country our countries they just want to get ahead of well what's what kind of crimes are happening right you know, so that's what uh, that's the where Stabler was, but he was in uh, he was in uh, in Italy. Yeah, you had to, but I mean, you had to learn so much before you stood in front of the camera, because Elliot Stabler had gone through a lot of changes. Yeah, but you know, everything kind of got put to the back seat because we opened up with the tragic uh, death of my wife. So that kind of now she was focused played, everyone's attention. She was played by Isabel Gillies, and Kathy, you know, goes way way back. The character, yeah, and uh, so I'm just trying to imagine since we're thinking about the life of an actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, hi, Isabel. Uh, there's some good news and some bad news. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, you get the job bringing the character back. That's the good news. Yeah. The bad news is, well, I've been there, but I and I, uh, I put this on record. I really uh, fought strongly. To at least keep her, to to uh, have her remain for a while, um, not just in the catatonic state. I, you know, I wanted, you know, that, you know, I, I wanted her there for a while. I thought there was a little bit of runway mm. to explore. But, you know, that, that, look, that's show busy. You know? oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I know. We were, we were talking about that this morning. Yeah. Steve, Steve Sharippa. Do you know Steve Sharippa? Of course I do. Okay, Steve Sharippa said that back when they were doing The Sopranos, practically the entire cast, <laughs> as soon as they would get the script every week, would just keep going through yeah. the pages to find out if they made it until right, the end. Right. Oh, I thought you I thought you were going to say every... every um, Cast member had to sign. Yes, I know that I will be dead at some point <laughs> in the series. <laughs> well, in a way, but they they didn't know when. So yeah, because you know. that's how it was on Oz that they would. Uh, I was on a show Oz and uh, about a prison drama, prison inmates, and they would. You'd have to sign. Do you have a problem with nudity? Mm. Do you have a problem with same sex uh, engagement? And I well, had to sign the ass clause. Well, yes, well, for Showtime. I, said, I heard you right. wrote it. Oh, I heard you wrote it. <laughs> well, that, well, that was the big that. Was, that actually was an argument could be made that that was the birth of uh, the big television phenomenon that later encompassed shows mm. like The Sopranos on HBO. That that Oz. Yeah. Well, I always I always took it when uh, HBO at the time had groundbreaking. Uh, there were three things that they said of the kind of shows that we put on, and mm. I always thought, well, the groundbreaking is Oz. Yeah, that, that's how that struck me, but. Yeah. Maybe I'm prejudiced. I mean, I'm biased. Okay. You've a- done you've done Oz and Law and Order, but when we mentioned to Big E that you were coming, the first thing he said was Her- Harold and Kumar. Good man. And the- <laughs> <laughs> good, good man. And he did happy. So it's can you, the difference between comedy and the seriousness. Like, which one do you yeah. prefer in that? Well, that's what's so great about the Law and Order gig is I'm exhausted by all the drama at the end of doing it. Really? So all I want to do is comedy. That's all. I search out because it's, it's almost like uh, food for the soul. You have to find a place to go towards, uh, you know, anarchy and madness and, and fun. And, and yeah, like I think Wet Hot American Summer when I think Chris Maloney at first. And <laughs> then you go Law and Order and everyone's got something different. Oh, I mean, well, Chris Maloney is with us. And well, is it true what they say? That famous saying, comedy is hard. Or is that just a saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's just a saying. <laughs> okay, because you do both. Well, you know, I, yeah, I do, I, I guess. I have done. Yes. Uh, whether I, Adam's you know. like, son of a comedy's hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's 16 after 8. We'll I'm not ro- qualified to do anything else. We'll, we'll be right <laughs> back here at Q104.3. Uh, Chris Maloney is with us here at Q104.3. Yes. Okay, Law & Order Organized Crime. 
It's very different from the prior uh, Law and Order yeah. series. It's, I mean, the whole format of it is different. Um, it's uh, the others, generally speaking, you know, even though there are personal storylines that continue from episode to episode, generally, uh, you can watch one individual episode and you get the whole story, you know, from when the crime is committed to when everything is all settled and, and wrapped up. Um, and that's, I think, that's called a procedural, right? A, episodic. Yeah. And episodic procedural. And yeah. Procedural. Where, yeah. where the new series uh, is more of uh, a serial. It has a mm-hmm. long story arc, you know, and you, it, and and it's very interesting. You you get on. It's not solved at the end of the hour. You you got to sit on the edge of your seat and wonder what's coming next. Yeah, we like that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it was pitched to me. And I'm glad they're standing by it. And uh, you know, it's taken us a couple seasons to kind of figure out the formula to get it done and and what's most kind of dramatic and entertaining and. Uh, yeah, we're getting there. You know what's freaky about this? You know, Jim, you're talking to one of your idols. I mean, someone that you watch on TV all the time. Well, I think and he's. Chris, a, I think I'm he, an idol. I think. Yeah. I think Ooh. he's. I mean, he yeah. is. Yeah. He is. Yeah. Yeah. Human sacrifice a, can't be far no, behind. No, the train of <laughs> paid off. <laughs> he <laughs> is an extraordinary actor. He is, but Chris but. always wanted your job. Did you know that? True. Chris, talk about it. Tell him. That was my. Uh, that was my plan B. I uh, actually went to, uh, and I can't even remember what it was, but I went to a, a, first of all, I snuck on the NYPD radio uh, show that they had. Uh Oh, NYPD Blue? No, 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 no. no. NYU University. Oh, NYU. NYU. I went to NYU. I did not go to there. A friend went there. (laughs) I borrowed his ID. I was in acting school, and I thought, you know what, let me get some training on the radio. So I went in. Oh, it's a WNYU. Yeah. College radio station. Yep. And uh, I, (laughs) this is how, my friend's name was Avery Rifkin. Okay. Okay. So if you have to blame it on someone, it's Avery. Yeah. But I didn't even think, so I would get these looks like. You're not Jewish. Yeah, he is. <laughs> and, and I didn't even I didn't even know that that would be a, a telltale sign. But now I'm like, Avery Rifkin? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. You might as well be you know, yeah. Shlomo. Shlo- Esmerella Gonzalez. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> I, I snuck on there, and uh, I had a, a couple hours that I would do. And I was on the part where it only broadcast to the uh, dorms. Right. Mm-hmm. They had two separate... Yeah. Yeah, uh, stations. So I did that, but then I also m- went to broadcast school, mm-hmm. and uh, and that was always my plan B. And because you know, I'd were do... you playing music or were you like doing a talk show? Like, well... well, that's you know, that's the <clears throat> the broadcast. Uh, I was attempting to do the wacky morning shock jock mm-hmm. thing, mm-hmm. And trying to find what my style was. And right. M- my waking on- up with Rifkin. Yeah. <laughs> so wait a actually, so actually my name play, was Toast. It would, oh, okay. You could play Toast. Howard Stern this morning Toasty because tunes. yesterday the two of them were meeting for the first time on air and Howard became Jim's therapist. Oh, yeah, he really dug deep in the yeah. gym. How, 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 go ahead. How did he help or not help? Come on. What did advice he did he give you? I uh, Chris Maloney is here with us <laughs> here at QNO 4.3. Uh, <laughs> now, there are times when you have to dig deep into a character like Elliot Stabler, who has been a part of your life for decades. Uh, But there are also times when you have to get into a character for two or three days, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And then you move on to something else. It's a really incredible part of the life of an actor that, you know, I've observed from afar, but never really quite understood how you were able to do that, and that's one of the reasons why I'm in awe of those great performers that I see on my screens. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it's you, you're one person and then you're somebody else. Yeah, I don't know uh, what the alchemy is, and I, th- um, I'm, I know every actor is different. You know, you get into that thing, that space, that person in a variety of ways. For me, I think um, I, I read the text. I read the tone, and it starts to become music to me. Like, I understand this character's rhythms. I understand his place rhythmically within the broader 
scope of the piece, mm -hmm. let's say, of, of the whole show or movie, um, I, I begin to understand his role and what... And I guess, you know, you, you uh, then tap into uh, certain attitudes or quirks or things you know where they're from you know maybe you you know tap into certain stereotypes or if there's a stereotype you try and twist it and you know so it's a kind of an anal a personal analyzing of what it is you're seeing on the page as you read it and how's the how's how is that making you feel and you have to make judgments on these things. And then, you know, like if he's a kind of quote-unquote irredeemable character, I think, you know, and I think most actors would agree with this, that you have to find uh, what's likable about him, what's redeemable, what is, where's he coming from? You know, if he's a really bad, bad guy. Mm -hmm. And so because, you know, just to play bad for bad's sake is, I don't think that crosses the finish line well for you. Okay, and then there's the physical parts. Because you're not just uh, you're not just reciting the words from uh, a script, trying to capture uh, the essence of whatever emotional state that character is in. You've got to move. You've got to walk with many mm -hmm. characters. You've got mm -hmm. to uh, climb things. You've got to turn around and talk to somebody else in the scene. I mean, there's so much you have to concentrate on. <laughs> yeah, you know that was the, actually one of the first things that uh, when I first started working, because you know. Uh, when I first started working, I realized um, it. They're more the the higher you go, the more plates you're given to keep spinning, mm -hmm. and that's how it struck me that it just doesn't work. To I'm going to show up and I'll have the lines memorized. What was your first job in acting? Uh, commercials. Um, uh, you know, a couple awful broad off, 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 off Broadway shows, uh, but commercials. And then the first, first, you know, what I would you know, put in air quotes, uh, legit was actually the first ever cable show on, uh, HBO, which was the first cable show. Do you remember what that was? No. First in 10 on HBO. It was about the fictitious football, professional football team, the California Bulls. You remember that one, Adam? I do. Adam yeah. remembers. <laughs> I remember first yeah. and ten. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Delta Burke was mm -hmm. the owner because her husband had died and left it to her. And I was there when Shannon Tweed, because I guess Delta moved on and mm -hmm. started doing sitcoms and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, that was my first. And then wow. after that, my big break to like kind of introduce me to uh, Hollywood people that <clears throat> actually make decisions. Um because HBO was still not quite what it is today, uh, was uh, the Finelli Boys. It was a sitcom. And the Finelli Boys was named after the Finelli Cafe because two of the writers went to NYU, mm -hmm. and they would hang out there and, and write. So the Finelli Cafe down on Prince. Wow. Well, that's really cool. And uh, the fact of the matter is, if you go to Broadway shows, if you've gone to Broadway shows any time yeah. over the past several <laughs> decades, and you pick up the playbill and you read about the cast... Almost every single person has worked for yeah. Dick Wolf in a Law and Order <laughs> episode from one of yeah. the series. As a matter of fact, somebody quite rightfully said to me years ago that Dick Wolf was responsible for pretty much supporting the entire New York acting community for years before this became a big production hub. That's a fact. Yeah, absolutely. And I saw a comedian once. Adam, yep. I saw a comedian. Dick it wasn't my you. I'm many sorry. Times. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, Dick. Uh, Thank you. But I saw a comedian once get on stage, and in the middle of his act, he went into this long, sad soliloquy about how he was the only actor in all of New York who had never worked for Dick Wolf, <laughs> and he couldn't figure out why. It was it was pretty funny. <laughs> Might have been the soliloquy. <laughs> okay, Chris, <laughs> sir. Thank you so much. My pleasure. For spending time here with us at Q104.3. A movie actor, television star, mm -hmm. and a body that millions of women are drooling over yeah. while they watch his this commercials is, this is the on difference. TV. I'm working out so things don't get worse. Right? <laughs> He's making things better, so God bless you. Okay, thank you so much. My for, pleasure. For visiting Congratulations. With us. New York's classic rock, Q104.3.